Hello, my beautiful humans. Thank you for joining me on another episode here on Creative Street. I'm your host, Steph Escoto. And today we're going to be talking about the creative... So I titled it Job. But really, it's not a job. And I don't think it's a responsibility either because the creator really doesn't owe anybody anything. But I guess it's like the duty, right? What, what as a creator are you trying to accomplish or can you give back to the community? Right. Um, I'm going to, I'm trying to catch myself whenever I say the rights. So bear with me. Um, But before we start quick shout out to Ethan, happy birthday. I hope you have an awesome day and you enjoy this other year on this planet um thank you for being such a wonderful human and we will be having ethan on a future episode um later down the road um that way you guys can can connect a voice to this name um but happy birthday ethan i am happy to be a part of your life and vice versa happy that you are part of mine um Thank you so much for tuning in and for giving me your support. Um, Another shout out. So I found out that today is like national first generation college day. Like, um, and I, as a fellow first generation uh, college graduate from Hispanic parents that, you know, they immigrated over here to the United States um, this is also a celebration on me, but also on my siblings and many of my friends that are especially here in Miami, um, that we're first generation. Um, so congrats, guys. We worked really hard and yeah, I I think we deserve a day. <laughs> so to kick off today's um episode. We okay, so I'm gonna start off with the obvious one, right? So, what's the job of a creative? The job of a creative, in my opinion, the very first thing they're doing is they're questioning, they're challenging, right? When we find something captivating, when we find something intriguing, it's because it's new, right? And it's new because it challenges what currently is in play. It it's unique, right? Um, oh, it's unique. Um, so, but, but what makes it unique? It's that it, it challenges, it, it questions what the status quo is. What is the norm? Um, I'm going to take a quick snippet to give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, and it has to do with like recognition, right? So when when we first start off at any creative, when we first start off, we're doing it because we we love to do something. And I'm I'm at fault for this. For instance, when I first started painting, I did it because I wanted to do it because that's what called to me. Um, And there came a point where I got so much positive feedback and recognition for it that then I felt the need to keep superseding myself um, and keep putting out at this weird elevation. And I was afraid to try new things and I was afraid to mess up because I didn't want to lose that recognition. I didn't want to lose that respectability. So to quote Virginia Woolf um, from her essay, A Room of One's Own, moreover, it is all very well for you. Who, for you, who have got yourselves to college and enjoy sitting rooms, or is it only bed sitting rooms? Of your own to say that genius should disregard such opinions. That genius should be above caring what is said of it. 
Unfortunately, it is precisely the men or women of genius who mind most what is said to them. All of that to say, at first, you're not doing it to be recognized, or ideally, you're not doing it to be recognized. I think that our very, the things that we create come when it's just made with no one else in mind except what your vision is. And we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and it's, it's the moment that you become recognized. It's the moment where now you feel like you're under a microscope where creativity is stifled because now you're looking to please others. You're, you're looking to remain relevant. You're looking to stay in the conversation and constantly put out something new or um, captivating or, or continue to question and challenge when you're not even inspired to do that, right? Sorry, I'm a work in progress myself. Um, so I think recognition is something that we as creatives, we want, right? Like we want to live off of our, who, who doesn't, I don't know, who doesn't want to live off of the things that they make and be known for them? I'm, I'm definitely one of those. I would love to be a Shakespeare. I would love to be a Da Vinci. I would love to be a Darwin. In, in the essence of history to be remembered as somebody that created a change and a paradigm shift in some way, shape, or form. And I think that I think that it's it's a great dream to have, but when you're working as if that really is the goal, there's something about that that seems disingenuous. Like Darwin didn't go out you know, looking for his origin, like uh, looking to for the, you know, the theory of natural selection. He he wasn't out there looking for it. It dawned on him. It he was out there exploring the world as he wanted, and it it came to him. The idea came to him. I'm sure Da Vinci didn't go out seeking to do these great works of art and these architectures. They I'm sure that there were things that were coming to him as he was being a creative. Um, but to kind of elaborate more on the responsibility or the duty that a creative has when it comes to questioning and challenging, um, I want to bring up Socrates because I feel like a lot of us know his famous, his famous, one of his most famous quotes is, um, I know one thing is that I know nothing at all. And I I forget if this is in the Timaeus or in the Apology. It's in one of those, in one of Plato's writings, um, where he where Socrates says that. And it's literally that. Like he's saying, like because people kept saying that Socrates was a wise man. And Socrates was like, there must be somebody smarter than me. Like, there has to be somebody smarter than me. I can't be the wisest man. I don't know much. And so he goes around and he starts asking people, um, you know, the, he starts asking them so many questions. And then at the end, he realizes, you know what? I am the wisest man because I'm not afraid to admit that I know nothing. I'm not afraid to question and to admit that it's that I'm limited in what I actually do know. And I, the way that I see it, and I and I love it, it's that Socrates didn't get lost in the potential of the answers. He didn't he didn't um he didn't use questioning as as looking for answers right he was gauging responses but he wasn't taking those as actual facts 
And I think that's something that we do know nowadays, where anything anybody says is a fact or it's a very strong opinion, right? But life isn't about answers. Life is about questioning, right? Life is about, if you if you don't question something, you can't learn from it. You can't find other ways of seeing something of other perspective. Um, I think that through questioning, we can humble ourselves. And through questioning, we engage in topics and different topics and have actual meaningful conversations where we can sh- uh, share like valuable ideas and, and information and try to really understand ourselves and the universe and the reality that we live in. You have to question things. Um, I rec- I recognize, though, that sometimes questioning can be a challenge, and it can also lead to a lot of anxiety. Like, it, it's happened to me where I get caught up in the question of, like, what's the purpose of life and what's the, why do we even exist? And... These are questions these are questions that there really is no answer. The answer is whatever I decide it is. And so it can leave you in a very sticky spot. It can leave you in a very weird place emotionally, internally. And so I get it. Questioning is hard, and especially in our society, we can't really question many things. Um, we can question more than most other countries, but there's some things that we we can't. We've already kind of constrained ourselves to it, right? Like there's no other way around it except forward. Um, so you can question how you want to move forward, but you can't question why it's in play. Um, but anyways, to continue. Um, build off of Socrates is questioning, right? There's also something that I feel is the responsibility of a creator. And it's not it's not in your face. But a creator's job is to fail. That sounds weird, right? Because as a creator, you don't want to fail. At least I, I have a problem with failure and I've been working on it for, for years. I have a problem when it comes to failure. You don't want to fail. But failing is so important. It's so important. It's how we learn. It's how we find new things and new techniques. I've done it time and time again. Um, And I I can only... Why I reference myself, guys, is I'm the only one that I can go off of. I can't speak for for anybody else. But I hope it resonates with you. Um, But failure... In failure, there is opportunity for creativity. The moment, so again, building off of Socrates, the moment you think you know something, you won't want to try anything else. And just think about that in your everyday life, not necessarily in your creative act. The moment you you think you know how something is supposed to function, you will always want to do that. And, and that's our brain's cheat sheet, right? Our brain just wants to do something quick, easy, done, over with. It doesn't want to constantly have to learn because learning learning is 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 tough. Learning takes energy, learning takes time, learning takes patience. Patience that right now our society doesn't even have right? If it's not a 10 second video, you're not watching. Um, So failure teaches you patience. Failure teaches you that you, that there are many ways of going about things. There, one of my favorite sayings, um, and I don't think I, I don't think I I heard this from anybody, but I I could be wrong. I don't know. Um, But there's so many paths that lead us. There's so many roads that lead us to the same destination. Um, it, Paramore's song, Misguided Ghosts, like literally says that. Like sometimes you, you 
And sometimes it's not even following a specific road. Sometimes it's making your own road, right? Because there's so many ways of getting to the same end, to the same goal. And I think that in failure, you allow yourself to try new things, to try different things, to to experiment and explore and not get caught up with, am I doing this right? Are people going to judge me for it? Um, If I do this wrong, am I going to be considered like a lunatic or crazy? And (laughs) it's funny because in the the creativity book of Osho that I've been reading, um, he talks about a creator versus a producer, right? So a creator is someone that is constantly constantly exploring that failure. Give me a second. There is a bug. Got it. Um, a creator is a creator is someone that isn't afraid to do different things. Um, a producer, right? To be a producer and to mass produce something, that means you're doing it the same way every time. It's copy, paste, go. Copy, paste, go. A creator doesn't do that. There is one work of art, one of a kind. It cannot be recreated because there was no copy paste mechanism for it you can get very close but it's not the same um so yeah so failure i would say is the second real job of a creator um the last is one of the most obvious right it's communication we're creatures of communication we're we're social creatures the only way we can connect with one another is through communication and, and communication in different means. And I leave it open because in as as creators, we communicate with our audience in various ways. Um, but our job is to communicate. What you're communicating is up to you. Um, but most of the time, it contains an emotion and you're seeking connection. You're, you're not seeking, but you're opening the door to connect. Um, I would say that there's two energies that go into this communication. Um, in it's, there's two energies and that's the, goal-oriented energy where you do it with a specific goal in mind, right? So an example is marketers and advertisers. They're communicating, they created this, you know, this ad campaign, this song, this um, billboard, whatever, this uh, post with a goal in mind that you are going to purchase their product or you know, use their product, whatever it is. Um, And that's goal oriented. Like someone made this deliberately trying to get this, this message out there and elicit an emotion from you, right? Like food, uh, like fast food joints, they want to elicit um, like this, this feeling of hunger and want, right? Like you want to satisfy this hunger with this food. Um, and they, they show you family, um, within this restaurant and how they're enjoying each other's company. And so it makes you want to seek this connection and seek this moment of enjoyment and family time. Right. Um, Then I would say it's the second one. There's a second one. The second energy, which I think is the realm where most creators live, or I'd like to think that most creators live, though I realize it's hard to always be in that state. 
um, as someone who has experienced it. I've experienced both states, and I gotta say that my se- the second one is by far my favorite because it just leaves you so open to the energy around you and allowing yourself to do those failures and to, you know, and to challenge yourself and challenge others and challenge that status quo. Um, the second one is the relaxed, unmotivated energy. It's it's uh, what Osho calls the celebrators, right? Um, and in this one, there is no goal. The goal is is you the goal is whatever you were feeling you were able to express it you were able uh to just do what you wanted to do um osho says when the goal is not in the future when there is nothing to be achieved rather you just have to celebrate it you have already achieved it so that's why he calls them the celebrators because like you there is no goal just when you're done you're like yeah i did that that was awesome let's try something else or you know what i want to bathe in this thing because it took so long to create um and that mindset here is that the moment the act of creating and the act that you're done that moment is all there is the the whole your whole energy your whole existence is poured into this moment um and i think that those that live in that moment um and do things because they want to do it regardless of the passive for future benefits um i think that that's that's the essence of life that we we tend to miss um in these modern days it's it's hard because we all want to get the clicks and get the likes and be relevant but sometimes doing something out of fun because you want to do it and regardless of what other people think is the most rewarding thing you can possibly do um there's this thing that most creators refer to as like this vision. It's like an image in their mind's eye, right? Or for musicians, like in their ear. Like it's something that you you took from the ether, right? That the, that the universe kind of bestowed on your energy. Um, and <laughs> it's like... It's something that only you can create. It's something that it was tuned to you in your unique way. Not to say that there aren't people out there doing something similar. I think similarities exist, right? So I was talking about Darwin earlier. um, And I think it's Albert E. Wallace. Uh, I could be wrong. I'd have to double check i'll leave it in the show notes in case i am wrong but there was when he was creating his theory of natural selection there was someone across um across the world working on a similar theory they weren't exactly the same but the criteria the essence of the theory was the same so needless to say darwin like he rushed um, and he published first, which obviously that's why um, Darwin comes out as like the the owner of that theory. But really, it was two guys working on it at the same time. They just didn't really know each other. They were crossway. Um, they were halfway across the world from each other. But I think the universe out in the universe, that information was out there, and those that were in tune with those observations, because I, I do believe that. There are certain patterns that exist that others are more inclined to see due to their unique experiences and their perspectives. But I think the information is out there and it's just a matter of who is willing to listen to it, who is willing to receive that information and 
put forth that information. Uh, so, yeah. So that being said, um, I think, okay. So to paraphrase really quick, um, Thomas Torward um, from his 1950, 1915 book, The Creative Process in the Individual, paraphrasing, um, we're looking for something personal that can be obtained by creating conditions that have yet to exist. That is the job of the creator. I think in essence, that is the job of being a creator. Um, so yeah. Um, I'm gonna wrap it up here just because um that that's all I need to say uh for today's episode in terms of this topic. Maybe in the future something else will come out, but let's keep it concise and keep it um directly to what is needed. And I think just to kind of recap again, creator's job, challenge, question fail um and last but not least communicate communicate whatever it is that your mind's eye sees fail and not be afraid of trying new things finding solace and happiness in that failure and question the world question why things are done with the way they are who knows maybe you can come up with a better way of doing it Needless to say, thank you again for joining me on another episode today on Creative Street. Um, next episode, um, I'm going to be talking to a fellow podcaster, Wiz, uh, about podcasting with tips and tricks, um, how he got into it in the first place, and what it takes to kind of do podcasting. And... Um, <laughs> This Friday's mini-sode is actually going to be a mini-clip of a song. Um, I mentioned Paramore's Misguided Ghost. That's one of my favorite songs. It's it's pretty old, but it's one of my favorite all-time songs. Um, just because it has that essence of there's no need to follow anybody else's footsteps. You can make your own way of, of doing things. Um, that is at the core of being a creative sorry so that being said thank you again for joining me on another create another episode on creative street i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day guys thank you stay creative